IPython is short for Interactive Python, and it was a project that started out to create a better REPL, a better um, read-evaluate print loop for Python. However, under the influence of browser-based uh, interfaces like those in Mathematica and SageMath, IPython morphed into IPython notebooks. And notebooks are web documents, uh, documents that have been extended to include both the source code and the results of running that code, along with all the other rich media supported by modern browsers. A key motivation behind the design was uh, to counter the lack of reproducibility in scientific papers uh, by providing a, a new kind of executable and hence reproducible document. IPython notebooks proved to be a huge success and, and were adopted by many, many other programming languages so that the name was changed uh, from IPython to Jupyter, which is a contraction of uh, Julia, Python and R, uh, which are three programming languages. Jupyter notebooks have become the default engine of data science and machine learning and artificial intelligence and approximately 7 million notebooks are estimated to be on GitHub currently with usage growing exponentially. And the technology is taught to hundreds of thousands of college students each year. That said, many developers really liked Jupyter Notebooks, but they also wanted more of the tools that um, they were familiar with from their regular integrated development environments, their IDEs. And this has prompted the creation of Jupyter Lab. Jupyter Lab is a next generation browser-based IDE. It was developed collaboratively by academia and industry. And one of the keys to Jupyter Lab's success was the uh, open source libraries that were created to enable a single browser window to uh, contain multiple interactive resizable sub windows or, or, or panes. So if we look at the graphic on the left hand side, we see that the single browser window has multiple Subwindows which contain notebooks, code editors, shell terminals, and, and graphical visualizations of uh, data. Jupyter Lab is designed from the ground up to be extensible. Each window is just an instance of a plugin, and no plugin has more privileges than any other plugin. So now developers can have notebooks alongside more familiar ID tools, making the overall value proposition uh, much more compelling. Now it's time to see pink in action. And for this demonstration, we have a pink Z2 board with a Zinc programmable platform connected over a network to a client with a browser interface. In this screencast, we start by accessing the pink Z2 board over the network from our browser. The board responds by launching the Jupyter Lab page. This is exactly the same landing page that we would see if we were running Jupyter Lab on a desktop. For this demo, we're going to select a folder in the file browser, which contains a notebook for a machine learning classifier that we would like to open. We can scroll through the uh, notebook and inspect its output just as we would on a desktop machine. Next, we open the Linux shell and cat the CPU info to confirm that we're indeed running on an ARM embedded microprocessor and a Xilinx Zinc device. Then we can execute a tree command to inspect some of the files on the target system. Leaving the terminal shell, we can go to the online help for matplotlib and find a radar plot that we might want to use. We can now download the example notebook and Python script to our external host, which is a PC in this case and we can confirm that we have the new notebook and script. We can simply drag and drop the downloaded files into the pink programmable platform and reopen them on the target to verify that we have both the notebook and script versions of the Raider plot libraries. Finally, we can re-execute the Python code on the target without having to write a single line of extra code. So as you can see, the Jupyter Lab IDE works extremely well on Zinc programmable platforms, 
and a Python developer who already knows JupyterLab could begin working on Zinc immediately.